Coming up, a new trainer from Cirrus designed to get pro pilot students on the right track. Take a trip to a state park with its own runway. An airport meant for spacecraft. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. There isn't any better time to get into aviation than now. From cabin crews to mechanics to pilots, demand is greater than the supply, according to Boeing. And here's another indicator. Yep, another major manufacturer sees a new demand for training aircraft. Earlier this year, Piper introduced the Pilot 100 and 100i, aimed at smaller flying schools. And now Cirrus is going after the professional pilot track with a trainer designed to speed the transition to the heavy iron. Here's more from AOPA pilot editor-at-large Dave Hirschman. Take a close look. You've never seen this in a piston Cirrus before. It's a landing gear handle. So that the student will get used to including putting down and putting up the landing gear in their flow to train for larger, more advanced aircraft. And the instructor can actually do give failures to the student um, for the landing gear during the training. The track trainer is all about training pilots to fly bigger, faster, more complex aircraft. It's sort of setting you up for your career aircraft, be that a small business jet like a, you know, a, a Phenom or a Vision Jet, um, or a larger aircraft like a CRJ or an Airbus. Airlines flying Airbus and Boeing aircraft are already using Cirrus SR-20s and 22s in their ab initio pilot training programs. Cirrus has taken what it's learned from that to build an airplane suited to the rough training environment and designed to put pilots on a career path. Durable, non-scuff materials for the interior, decals to help students through their pre-flights, and a technically advanced panel just like the big jets. With the FMS and with the integration of the FMS with the flight deck and all of the um, kind of automation and safety features, these are things that you see in bigger aircraft. Um, so people come out of these programs better equipped to move into, kind of to have a better base to move into more advanced aircraft. Cirrus says the track is competitively priced. We also sort of wanted to dispel the myth in the market that we only sell million dollar luxury planes. Well, the base Trek will go for $410,000. That's about 125,000 bucks more than the Piper IFR trainer, but they're aimed at different customers. I think a lot of airlines are looking at how do we make our own pilots as opposed to where do we go find pilots, and we want to support that. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. And speaking of students, a tremendous opportunity for young people in Colorado. The Aspen Flight Academy is launching a program called Every Student Flies. It's designed to introduce each student at the Aspen Public High School to aviation by taking them for an intro flight and giving them a tour of the airport and tower. There are currently 500 students enrolled in the school. Some of those young aviators on the ProPilot track could end up behind the controls of this new Cessna jet. This week, the company announced it received FA type certification for the Citation Longitude. They called it a super mid-sized jet, can seat up to 12 passengers in a stand-up cabin, has the longest range in the Citation line, 3,500 nautical miles, and it cruises at some 483 knots. The Garmin G5000 suite is at the front end with auto throttles. Cost? Well, if you have to ask, but when they first announced the Longitude in 2012, it was about 26 million bucks today. Well, it's closer to about $27 million. So I got to fly the Longitude uh, last year, wrote a piece about it for the magazine, and I gotta say, it's an impressive airplane. It's the largest cabin that Cessna has ever built. I, unlike you, didn't get to fly one, but I have seen them, uh, been through one, in right. a static mock-up anyway, and yeah. uh, impressive. Very, very capable airplane, so I hope they do well with it. Me too. It's been a long trail, but this horse is just beginning to race. The Texas Aircraft Cold has received its ASTM certification. The SLSA is built in Hondo, Texas. The company has been working towards certification for months. We had a feature story on the Brazilian-designed Colt in the August issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. If you're a fan of canards, this is one of the big weekends of the year. The annual canard fly-in to Rough River is happening in Kentucky. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop shows us why the scenic state park 
is a great destination for any pilot. On a scenic lake, along a winding river, in the rolling hills of Kentucky, just about sunset, you'll find people with a line in the water and not a care in the world. And just up the hill, an airport hosting a fly-in for canards. This is uh, my fourth year here, uh, and it's just a great time for all the canard airplanes to get together and uh, hang out and to get to enjoy each other's airplanes, lifestyle, and company. So people fly from all over the country. They fly from as far as California, Florida, and on the East Coast to come to this event. It's a pretty cool event and a very cool air place. And just the, uh, the relaxed environment and the camaraderie is wonderful here. And the setting is perfect. We have a, a lodge here with 40 rooms. We have 17 cottages with two bedrooms each. We have, and of course, the airfield. Identifier 2 India 3, the 3,200-foot strip is asphalt and in good condition. There's no fuel on site, but there's a nice pilot's lounge and plenty of ramp parking. On the weekend of the Canard fly-in, you'll see some rare airplanes and some fantastic examples. But throughout the camping season, there's plenty to do for the whole family. Major season is from, let's say, middle of April all the way through October. Uh, we have activities for families on the weekends. We have a recreation department that offers activities centered a lot on keeping the kids busy while mom and dad can relax and hike or do whatever they want to do. So if outdoor activities are your thing, Rough River might just be your place. It seems like Rough River knows more having our canard flying and it always, uh, it, the sun always shines. We have uh, yet to, been, to be rained out here at Rough River. Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. You can find out more about Rough River on the Kentucky State Parks website. And if you like discovering places to go in your airplane, we've got a publication for you. Sign up for the AOPA Travel Pilot Newsletter. It's free to members and will give you lots of ideas for GA accessible destinations. Find out more on AOPA.org. Just search for Travel Pilot. It's a chance to honor some of the men and women who make our flying safer. Every year, the National Air Traffic Controllers Association hosts the Archie League Medal of Safety Awards. The event honors controllers who go above and beyond to save pilot and passenger lives. One of the winners this year, Andy Crabtree from Kansas City Center. Andy noticed something was wrong with a pilot of a Cessna 340. The airplane was flying directly into a thunderstorm and the pilot was having trouble communicating and keeping a heading. Andy took the initiative to help out, even though the pilot did not recognize they were in trouble. At November 4th, for Yankee, you have some uh, concerns that you might be experiencing hypoxia. Uh, uh, is everything all right in your cabin? November 4th, for Yankee, just to verify, if you're uh, not already, can you uh, put some oxygen on for a few minutes? Over the oxygen mask, you said, for for Yankee. After a few minutes on supplemental oxygen, the pilot was able to communicate clearly and safely continue the flights. Great save. That is a great save. It's kind of chilling when you hear, at least to me, when you hear yeah. things like that. It's what wonderful controllers we have. That, we do that have great, great folks out there helping us out. Absolutely. Hey, coming up, AOPA on Capitol Hill, standing up for you. And the first airport designed from the ground up for space travel. We'll be right back. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. Welcome back. The FAA's about to run out of money. Yep, here we go again. The federal fiscal year ends September 30th, and as we record this, Congress has yet to come up with the money for the federal government to keep the doors open on October 1st. But this time, this probably isn't a crisis. Congress will likely pass a continuing resolution before the end of the month that will keep the government funded through November. And since this seems to be a reoccurring crisis, AOPA President Mark Baker was before the Senate Aviation Subcommittee this week testifying in favor of a bill that would ensure the FAA has operating funds even if there was another government-wide shutdown. He also put in a plug for something else important to general aviation aircraft owners. 
There's about 160,000 general aviation aircraft that are under the rural airspace. About 87,000 of those will be equipped at the year end. You know, the equipage cost for general aviation, if it were complete, would be over $4 billion. We've encouraged our members and owners to start this equipage and get going. We had a government program for a rebate, $500, to help this stimulant go forward. I'd recommend that the community continues to look at getting that done. We'd like to see every aircraft in the country equipped with this ADSB technology for traffic management. So if you continue to look at that, that would be a big win for us right now. And a reminder, once again, in 2020, you'll have to have ADSB out installed in your aircraft to fly in airspace that requires a transponder today. That includes Class Bravo airspace and the so-called Mode C veil that surrounds it and at, at and above 10,000 feet MSL. So heads up for any of you who plan to fly within 30 miles of a major airport. It's a tough position to be in and one no one should envy. The owners of Light aircraft are offering their chipper design for sale. The ultralight or experimental amateur built kit design has become popular for being optionally part 103 and handling more like a traditional airplane. The company was hit with a series of setbacks it just can't get past. Last May, company founder James Wiebe suffered a crash in the development airplane after an engine failure in Alaska. This summer, the factory had a fire. You know, 20 fire trucks spread around the building, uh, firefighters walking around. And as we got in and looked, it became clear just immediately that it was gone. I mean, the inventory was gone. The plastic was melted. The CNC machine was destroyed. Uh, and so the first, the first, the first look was just as bad as it was, which was that uh, the facility uh, was completely destroyed on the inside, and 95% of everything that we had on the inside was destroyed as well. James says the company was underinsured. The losses are just insurmountable. He hopes to keep the design alive by finding a like-minded person or company to sell the rights to build the aircraft. You can find out more on his websites. The Redbird Skyport is no more. The innovative experimental FBO had been open in San Marcos, Texas for eight years. Redbird company leaders say it never made a dime. Founder Jerry Gregoire wrote a scathing takedown on the way he feels city leadership negatively affected FBO business and growth. You can read it on our website. And finally this week, they say a mile of runway will take you anywhere, but a little over two will take you into space. AOPA Senior Features Editor Julie Walker takes you to Spaceport America. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The Final Frontier. We've always wanted to go to space, to visit the moon, to put man's footprint in outer space. Government-funded space travel has been usurped by commercial ventures, such as Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic, whose Spaceship One vaulted into space and won the X Prize in 2004. Virgin Galactic continues to push the boundaries of space travel and is now on track to put passengers into space. The first purpose-built airport for space travel is Spaceport America. Its massive three-story hangar will house Virgin Galactic spacecraft in the vast, empty landscape of the New Mexican desert. The closest town is the quiet settlement of Truth or Consequences, located along the Rio Grande. Once called Hot Springs, T or C, as the locals call it, gets its name from a 1950s radio show. The Spaceport America Visitor Center is located in a historic adobe-style building in TRC. The Visitor Center is the starting point for a visit to Spaceport America. The Visitor Center shares Spaceport America's scientists and information with local groups, such as this visit from a children's summer library program. New Mexico invested $31 million towards this project, which it hopes will lead the state to a brighter future. A 12,000-foot runway and vertical launch pads are a part of Spaceport America's footprint in the desert. Whether you're talking about automobiles, computers, or the internet, those are all transformative technologies. If you look around, commercial space travel is going to be that next transformative technology that's going to affect our world and affect us as a species and in ways that we can't even imagine today. 
Our customers do vary quite a bit. We have flight customers and non-flight customers. Of course, our focus is our flight customers, whether that's those customers going up into just the upper atmospheres and trying to test out different airplane technologies, or, or is that our launching customers going all the way up into space? And of course, the big news is with Virgin Galactic being our major customer, uh, getting ready to send humans up into space on a tourism business for the first time in human history. Virgin Galactic is coming home to New Mexico, and it's coming home now. <laughs> Virgin Galactic is actually a customer of the state of New Mexico. Think of it almost like a tenant-landlord uh, relationship. Well, the building that the state of New Mexico built for Virgin Galactic, we like to call it the gateway to space. And that building's about 130,000 square feet, has about three different stories on it. If you've looked around the news, you've seen how uh, Virgin Galactic has developed their White Knight, or their carrier plane, and then they have their spaceship. That building can actually hold up to two White Knights and five spaceships in it, and it can have the full operations and full training for the future astronauts right there in the same building. Astronaut walkway means a lot of different things to, to various people. Of course, to those future astronauts, it's to, for their first journey into space. For myself, I like to look at it as a step towards a better future. The experiments that our customers come with us and the technology developments our customers come with are just making new ideas for a brighter future for tomorrow. So that walk going up to the next step is the next step forward for ourselves and I'm really excited for it. Learn more about Spaceport America in the October issue of AOPA Pilot. Julie Walker, AOPA Live. That is uh, quite a building they've built. It's impressive. Uh, New Mexico is really forward thinking in this space yeah. of space. 12,000 12, <laughs> feet of runway? Yes, uh, impressive. That, that is quite an operation. I hope they're successful. Thanks for being with us again. Like, comment, and subscribe below if you're one of the many who watch us on YouTube. And if you've got something you want us to hear about, drop us a line to the address on your screen and we'll see you next week. The people of AOPA's Legal Services Plan work to help protect your certificates, and they love to fly as much as you do. The AOPA Legal Services Plan is offered as part of our Pilot Protection Services. It's a members-only benefit provided to thousands of pilots like you.